Hello everyone! Right then, let me explain to you exactly what this video is, because this is a bit of a different one for the channel. So have you ever sat down with your mates and thought to yourself, wow, I should be recording this conversation because it's either so hilarious that you're never going to remember it all, or just that you want to you just want to capture that moment. Well that's exactly what we've done here. So I thought a little while ago it would be quite nice to have a sit down, friendly chat with my mates and just, just talk. Nothing scripted, just start off somewhere and end somewhere else and talk about every single thing in between. Um, uh, and as we were starting talking, press record on the camera and just talk. And that's exactly what we've done here. So in this video, I sit down with my mate Doug and we talk about, oh God, everything. There's lots of swearing, by the way. But we do talk about manic depression, because it's both something myself and uh, Doug suffers with. We do talk about more controlled vehicles. We talk about going out. We talk about suicide. We talk about, you know, all the cheery subjects under the sun. And uh, I thought, you know, it would be really good to actually get that on film. Now, even though there are some quite dark subjects in here, it is a really funny video. There's lots of humour all the way through because I've got quite a quite a good sense of humour and so has Doug. So we thought, do you know what, we're going to try something. Let's bring this to the channel. Let's see what you guys think. I think this was brilliant, but it's all up to you. So there we are, folks. This is just a little introduction. This is my chat with my mate Doug. There's going to be more of these hitting the channel at some point. So until then... Enjoy. Parents wouldn't let me have a remote control car because of the way I treated the scale electrics. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably right. My mum, mum wouldn't buy me anything when I was younger. Oh, she, oh that, that's if she watches this, she's going to be mortified. No, <laughs> she, she did. Yeah, she did. She bought me a load of stuff and I wrecked it. I think that's the correct way to say it. I take it apart and go, oh, look at all that. It don't work now. Uh, what can I do now? Put it back together. Yeah, there we are. Oh, it still don't work. Um, so sort of. For me, it's always been kind of like a, like a strange fascination. Um, I've always been kind of like quite analytical, but I've always found myself kind of like torn between like being pragmatic and having fun. <laughs> so when we got the yeah. scale electrics, when I first tried to use it, I pressed the thing too far straight away and the car just went around the corner and flew off the track and across the room. <laughs> and I was like, oh right, that's not supposed to happen. So I decided I was going to like, work out how to do it properly and I yeah. then worked out how to do it and then I was like it's not fun anymore the cars aren't flying around yeah exactly so, like after that like I would just be like right put it on the chat like oh if it goes because <laughs> this is fun and my brother would be like you're literally no fun to race with and I was like yeah but if we play like dodge it like <laughs> but I think that's the thing with skill extra though is that you you had to you, there, there, there is actually a skill to play mm. in the game. You have to be able to blast it on the streets and slow it down enough and gauge to go around the corners yeah. and then blast it just you're coming out of that corner. It's not something I can do. I get annoyed too quickly. But it, there is a skill to it. There is. Uh, it, it, and I, I don't know. It, it, if there's like professional skill extra races. Out there's got to sure, be but. something. They used to have like sort of like full on like worldwide like Subutio tournaments and stuff didn't yeah. they so wow. yeah I imagine that's like can you imagine how cutthroat that would be <laughs> that would be brilliant imagine I, I like... flicking your player and it hits somebody else and it's <laughs> not meant to that person just totally kicking off and then stabbing you in the face or something I, I like know. the idea that there are people because of like you know sort of like real life football violence I know it's like yeah. a minority thing among football fans but like if there was like one guy at these Subutio tournaments who'd like got a load of like extra Sabuto players but just like repainted them so that they were in civvies and if he lost just made them have fights with one another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean I, I don't know, I think it's it's a hobby that it's a fun hobby. Yeah. But it's time consuming. Very time consuming because the, the blue car there for the minute, I'm in the middle of turning that into a, a metal car. Yeah. So I've got all the parts um, to turn that into a total metal car, total aluminium car. Um, and it, it is something, it's it's so enjoyable, but it's very time consuming, extremely time consuming. Yeah. Um, but it's so fun. That's the other side of it, is that? I think, and I think a lot of people go like, oh, you know, you're an adult, why are you playing with toys and stuff like that? But it's the, <laughs> yeah. there's always like, and yeah, I suppose it's valid to a point, but like nope. it, stuff like that's kind of like rewarding, isn't it? You know? Like, everybody's got, like, some kind of toy. People go, like, oh, you're an adult, why don't you do something more practical? It's like, because I'd still be playing with it at the end of the day. If I got really into, like, you know, woodwork and I had my own lathe, you know, if I was enjoying it, then, you know, 
I'd still be playing with my toys. Absolutely. That's just what my toys yeah, exactly. would be. So I think people kind of go like, ah, oh, but these are for kids and stuff like that. And I always just think like, well, actually, you know, it's just, you know, people like what they like. Mm. I think this is the fun thing though, is that all nearly all of these come with an age read, uh, an age rating. Mm. So a lot of them will say eight plus or fourteen plus, mm. uh, and that's pretty much where it, it stops at like fourteen plus. Yeah. But I, at fourteen, I wouldn't have been able to control one of these because I was a nutcase. Yeah. I was a proper idiot at fourteen. <laughs> you know, I was running around the place, hopped up on God knows what, all the E numbers under the sun, and I, I, I just would not have been able to control something like this. Yeah. I mean. The huge bugs that I've got in the corner, the massive uh, remote control car, this one over here. Yeah. This is, this thing is so big and so goddamn heavy that if I was 14 and I was going to control that, I tell you what, I would end up taking somebody out with it. Mm. I would end up hitting somebody's, somebody's, somebody's foot with it. I mean, it weighs four and a half kilograms. That's quite heavy to be fair. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it, it's insane. It, but yeah, at 14, I wouldn't have been able to drive them. I wouldn't have yeah. been able to fly them. I got into into remote control planes at a very early age. Um, but again, I was hopeless at it. I was absolutely hopeless at it. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it was something that I, 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 I enjoyed so much. But then when I actually came to flying it, I was a nightmare. Um, I could fly it, but I couldn't land it. Yeah. I think... That's the that's the issue with that kind of thing when you're younger is the there's the fun element of it, but like I think when you're a kid and especially when you're a teenager as well, you have absolutely no desire to really be in control of anything. No, like it's that you kind of like hit a certain point and you go like the minute I start gaining some kind of control over anything, it stops being fun and I don't want to grow up yet, mm. kind of thing. So like. If you've got like a toy plane or something like that, and like you were saying, like the issues with like landing it, it becomes complex. And I think to a point, like you probably kind of make yourself not able to do it. And like there's this kind of perspective, especially like being a teenager, that kind of like destructive thing when you're like sort of like sat there thinking like, oh, I could learn to land it, but I think I'd rather crash but it. But if into I crash something. it, that's so much you more know? fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, th I, th I think that's fairly normal. But to I, be fair, but like, yeah, it, it, that's probably why it sort of like becomes more of a an interesting thing in sort of like adulthood because then that's when you find like different ways of having fun. Yeah. And that. And that that's fine. Something fell. I, I'm, 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 I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna overthink that. I'll, I'll, I'll investigate that a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I know. Yeah, it is. It's. Yeah, because, like, see, with planes, what I didn't realise is when you when, when I was younger, when I was flying them, you have to have the same sort of distance to take off as you do to land. Yeah. So it's fair enough if you hand throw them and you take them off, but how are you going to land them? You're going to crash yeah. them. <laughs> You're going to break them. So I think I spent out a lot of money on one plane. I crashed it once and then thought, yeah, do you know what, that's not for me. Uh, mm. But that was a stupid thing. I kept on going back to it. I kept on flying them because it, it was just fun. I think that's why when they train people to be like actual pilots, they start off in like simulators. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Imagine that, just going like trial by fire. <laughs> Let's see how it pans out. Like that would be weird. Like the 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 death quota would have to be pretty high percentage wise. Absolutely, I think it's mental because if I saw if I owned a model shop and if I saw myself walk into a model shop at fourteen going, "I am Mister, I want that one." Yeah. I would look at myself and go, no, you are you are obviously an absolute nightmare. I'm not going to give you a plane because you're going to end up terrorising somebody with it or crashing it. And I did both. Terrorised yeah. terrorize myself and then crashed it repeatedly. But it did. It taught me to love the hobby. Mm. That, that was the thing. It, I, and I yeah. sort of, I sort of, after sort of that age, I was like, do you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to settle down and then it's going to be something I pursue. And then it was... Like a lot, many years later, that you know, I got back into it, and because it's kind of awkward, because I had a few remote control cars with a few ex-girlfriends down the line, mm. and it was kind of, it was kind of at the time looked at, oh, I've got a remote control car, and they would look at you and go, oh, really? That's a little bit strange. Mm. But um, yeah, it's a fun hobby. It's something I, I, I'm extremely passionate about to the point of doing everyone's head in, talking about it constantly. 
<laughs> and just going, have you seen this car? It's amazing. And everybody else just goes, it's, it's a remote control car, shut up. Yeah. But yeah, it's something that, that I'm so, like, well, yeah. <laughs> I think it just goes to, yeah, just got to look around a little bit to see how nuts about it I am. But there we go. But uh, yeah, it also helps me from a mental health perspective as well. Mm. You see, I think that is, that's important because all my hobbies, because my job is in IT, all of my hobbies are all IT, were all like, IT related. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know, it's sort of, it, it was Hannah's idea, the wife's idea to sort of get into get into it again. And then, yeah, it kind of exploded. Yeah, I suppose if your kind of like hobbies are related to what you do at work, you know, if you if you're at a point where work is starting to drive you mad, you need something else because otherwise everything becomes this kind of negative path. Yeah, absolutely. After a while, I mean, I I don't know if I've ever really kind of like specifically focused on a hobby to like deal with my like issues with depression or anything like that but you know I think I think you do try and like at least throw yourself into something mm. that's not part of what's sending you mad yeah. like I mean I, obviously like with music and making music that's always been a thing but I think I don't think that's a fully sound therapeutic way of dealing with those kind of problems it, it, you know it's an outlet to a point and that's you know something that's really helpful to have but I don't think it necessarily sort of like helps as much as people would presume it does Yeah. because you know something's getting to you you're going a bit funny in here and you're sort of like putting it into your music but rather than it being this kind of like therapy of like oh I've got it all out because a lot of people would perceive it that way they'd be like they've managed to get that off their chest that must be great for them but like while you're doing it you're fully aware of this really ugly side of yourself <laughs> yeah. and, you're kind of, and it's it's horrifying because you'll be like right I'm going to write this song as a form of therapy for myself it's all going to be good yeah. and like you know you've like perfected the song in its sort of most raw form so then you're just kind of building on top of it and the more you're building on top of it you're going like, oh I'm horrible like, <laughs> Yeah. and it's kind of it's kind of hard after a while. I think, I think with stuff like that, the the way it becomes therapeutic is is if people have a positive reaction to it. Um, so you do need to like find other ways to sort of like deal with like you know depression and mental health issues and that kind of thing. And it's a hard one to do because the easiest one is the the worst one. I think we've all been guilty of it at some point, like, which is to just go like fuck it, I'm going to have a drink, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know, that doesn't like, help in the long run, though. I've, no, it doesn't at all. And, and honest, if I'm honest, you know, I've I've done it more recently than I care to say a couple of times, and it it is a bad thing. And like, it's difficult because you kind of like sometimes come round to it a little bit too late, and by that point you're already a bit screwed, kind of thing. And I think I think it's very difficult to kind of like take yourself out of a situation and try and like push in a different direction because that situation with mental health issues is something that's like all encompassing it's basically everything around you you know I mean that's the reason that doctors sign people off work because they're like we can't take away all your stress but we can take away a bit of it mm. you know and hopefully it'll make it easier for you to kind of move forwards but I think a lot of the the problems people have is that you know once they're kind of like stuck alone with themselves and they're in that place it's finding something to take them out of it and like I say with music there's a point where it can be therapeutic you know and if people have a good reaction to it but you know until that point it's very kind of selfish and narcissistic to try and sort of like push that forwards you know to try and sort of suggest that I'm gonna do this it's gonna make all my troubles go away and I'm going to be really proud because half of the problem with depression is that you, you know, to a point, a lot of the time have a bit of an issue with yourself and that's something you're trying to work on. So if you start focusing on something that's like me, 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 it becomes quite negative. And that's, it becomes that, all about you. Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. And that's not to say it, it shouldn't, that you shouldn't be selfish in those scenarios. You, you absolutely should. But the problem is you have to be as aware as possible of that because the the illnesses themselves are selfish and I think that's something that I've kind of especially as someone who 
did try to kill themselves once, I think my perspective of it is a little different from that of people who haven't and people who haven't really experienced anyone close to them do that. And there's a lot of sort of strange stuff, like when people kill themselves, like say it's a celebrity or something, you get a lot of people go like, how selfish of them? And I've, you know, from experience, sort of learned a lot. And I, it, it upsets me to hear that kind of thing because I find myself going like, but they're not selfish, the illness is. You know, it's not selfish really to say, I can't do this anymore. You know, that's, that's not a selfish thing to do, that, that's kind of the same way of reacting to fear that most people have. If you were in, I don't believe in ghosts, but say for example they did exist and you were in a haunted house, your first reaction would be, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave this house. <laughs> like, but, that, I, don't, <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't think anyone like is sat there like absolutely terrified going like, I see how this pans out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Somebody's just got killed upstairs. There's blood coming down. There's blood coming down the stairs. I might stay five more minutes. You know, you, know, you get the hell out. But that—that's the thing. You can't get out with depression. You're con you're constantly locked in, and that's something that I've come to learn in the past, like maybe five or six years, mm. is that it's it's something that once you are locked in. Mm. You're locked in for X amount of time. Could be a week, could be a month, could be yeah. 10 years. I mean, I was diagnosed when I was 22. So what was that? That's a long time ago. Let's not get into uh, um, specifics. Mm. That was easy for me to say. Um, but <laughs> let's... You know, Semantics has less P's if you want to try that next so It does. It does. <laughs> I remember that one. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, I don't think it's selfish. I, I, mm. used to, I used to think it was. And then yeah. I remember... I don't remember a time where I never, when I didn't feel the way that I currently do now. Mm. And even though I'm a lot better because of all of this and because of having a very supportive wife and family and because of being able to upload videos to YouTube and because of being able to connect with people that think like I do yeah, and have the same experiences, it, it helps, no end. But at the same time, I don't think committing suicide from... Yeah, I, my personal thing is that it's a selfish thing. No. I've had friends that have done it. I've tried it. And it's... Uh, oh, not tried, attempted. But at the same time, it's... I feel sad for the people that succeed with it. But yeah. I think I also feel that... I respect that they had yeah. enough they couldn't go on you they... can't you can't begrudge them that decision no you know and i think i think that's a big deal like when i was in the hospital afterwards you know people coming in to visit and that kind of thing and you're saying sorry to everybody overwhelming amount you... of guilt yeah and and i don't think you should feel guilty about it you know because but you're taught that that's what it is because you've upset other people by doing this like that you should feel guilty so you're apologizing to everyone and you kind of it makes you feel worse about yourself because you're sat there going like i'm not being honest here because mm. in that scenario you know it could be for a few days it could be for months it could be for years afterwards you might still be sat there going like you know what in my head it still kind of makes sense to do that you know and i found that really difficult like you know especially with my parents and things like that because they're um you know, they're very understanding people and they're very loving people and obviously they don't want me to go. Like, And I'm sort of saying sorry to them and all that kind of thing. But in the back of my head, I'm going like, I still don't feel like I should be here mm -hmm. at the moment. I've luckily got past that point, um, which I am quite glad about. But I think it, it's tricky because you have your perspective of what makes sense to you and then you have this perceived responsibility to try and make it up to other people and that's that's part of the problem with it and you know you're saying sorry to people because you're made to feel guilty and and, and I don't think you should feel guilty about it and I, and I think more than anything you should just kind of accept that it's okay for it to just be fear and embarrassment rather than guilt because you know that you're sat there going, I still want to be dead, but I'll tell these people that. You know, it'd be much easier if everyone kind of understood it. So if someone came into the hospital to see him and went like, oh, 
what's going on, you could just go, I, I'm honestly not sure. <laughs> you know, that would be much better. My dad was hilarious when he came in. I absolutely loved my dad, and this isn't anything against him. It's just he was so awkward because he didn't know how to deal with the situation. And, you know, people don't. Um, but he walked in, and he walked up and stood next to the bed, and he just went like, how are you doing? You're right. Oh no! Wait. Well, actually, no, no, obviously not. Um, but you know, as good as can be. Um, and then he just looked at my mum and went like, "I'll go and get us a cup of tea," and just walked off. And like, oh bless him. That was the, that was the first moment I laughed. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just kind of like, oh, at least he's the same. <laughs> I, I developed this kind of like really bizarre kind of like quick fire, like cruel, wit, sardonic sense of humour. I think it was just a coping mechanism. Because after you've been in the bed for a while on various, like, drips, you know... You are that's a bit the, of a drip. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I love that. Like, you know, you because I, 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 I overdosed. You know, it was an intentional overdose. And I was sat there, and I was on this, like, drip, and I was sat there thinking, like, what's in this? And, like, after a while, you just go, like, Probably just sugar, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> My blood's going to look sugar. like gluten. Um, but after you've been there for a while, they take you in to like see the... Um, it's like that person, I guess. They're kind of like the psych the person. Like, or yeah. whatever, or yeah. And um, I sat down with this woman and she chatted to me for a few minutes and then she went like, so do you think, you know, what what was the reason? And I went, oh, you kind of put me on the spot here, love. And she just sort of looked at me for a moment and she went like, well, I mean, yeah, but you have just, you know, tried to take your own life, so you must know the reason for it. And I just went like, oh, yeah, yeah, I do know that. But the thing is, I wasn't planning on actually having this conversation at any point. <laughs> and you didn't plan on it. <laughs> and yeah. she... And she was just sort of looking at me, like, and as I was saying it, like, you know, I didn't really want to be alive at that point, but I also didn't want to be in that hospital. Yeah. So, like, as I was saying these things, like, this little voice in my head was going, like, shut the fuck up. They're not going to let you go home. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. And that, and that stage, you're sort of thinking, do I play the game? Mm. And do I, oh, I'm fine, I'm all right. Oh, you know, silly five minutes. Or do you sort of tell them exactly what you think, knowing they're going to keep you in? I think it. I think it would depend on like how you did it. Like I say, I did it. I did a sort of like intentional overdose. I think like if I tried to like, you know, cut my wrists or something like that, I'd have probably yeah. been sat in there thinking like, you know what, I'm gonna stay here a while. But like because you know you get that kind of like treatment and stuff. But I think because I'd overdosed, like I was like, I want to go home. I've had enough drugs. <laughs> <laughs> this, <laughs> I'm full. <laughs> But you know, I mean, and I, yeah, I mean, I, I sort of laugh and joke about the whole thing. It's obviously a very serious situation, but I think that's kind of as part of my way of dealing with it. And I don't think, I think, I've tried to be very candid about it and sort of open about the whole thing. You know, it's not like I'm a celebrity and everybody's going to hear what I say or anything like that. But you know, if you are able to talk openly and honestly about it, even if someone happens to overhear or whatever, like you know. I'm not saying I'm out there to try and like save people from the big D or anything like that. Yeah. So yeah, I think there definitely is a culture around around depression and not talking about it. When I started this channel, mm. I did a video, I think it's video number four, I think, or five, I can't remember. And it was about my my thing with men, with um, mental health. Mm. And I recorded it. It took me about three or four hours from what I remember. And... It was quite crazy because I have blanks in my memory yeah. from either being on so many different antidepressants that it hurts or from drinking too heavily or from other drugs to try and shut this guy up from when I was younger um, that there are genuine blanks in my memory. So mm. I had to go back and ask, ask people that I grew up with questions and ask, uh, look at photos and try and picture, picture and piece together what these blanks are and yeah. sort of try and try and sort of you know redraw um, in my memory what things are but I thought it was important that I put that video out and I think only maybe 60 people have seen it but that's yeah. fine because 60 people have seen it 
You yeah. Know, and then hopefully that will get somebody else to talk about it. And then somebody else to talk about it. And, and I think the other side of that is that even if it's not seen by someone who ever suffers with any of these problems, you know, you can at least have an understanding of where other people are. Yeah. Because, you know, depression's, you know, it's, it's similar to, um, in terms of its scope, you know, sort of things like, like, like cancer and that kind of thing. Like, obviously, they're two very different things, and I'm not trying to conflate the two in any way, shape, or form, but they are things that will directly or indirectly affect pretty much everyone at some point. And I think a lot of like the sort of like shame that goes with the whole mental health thing is that people feel like they they shouldn't speak out about it because they don't want to ruin someone else's day. Mm. Um, and I think that's why it is important if you can to like you know actually speak about these kinds of things because otherwise no one knows what's going on. Absolutely. You know? And there are always going to be people who are going to go like, you know what, my life's fine, I don't want to deal with this. Yeah. And that's absolutely that's fair fine. enough to yeah. them. I, I don't hate them for that, no, I don't begrudge them that. No. That's absolutely fine. I want my life to be easier as well. So I get it. Yeah. You know? Um, but, you know, for people that that might be affected by it in someone else at some point, like for them to sort of at least know what's going on, you know, I can't tell people what the best thing to do is because I, I still don't fucking know. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, at least like kind of like if you understand something, like, because that's the thing, I think I think people go like, oh, well, what am, I, what am I supposed to do if somebody close to me is going through this stuff? And I think, honestly, the the best thing thing to do is just be there you know mm. support doesn't mean like having to do certain things just like make sure you're around make sure you're aware and then if something feels like the right thing to do as long as you're not swamping that person just do it yeah you know if it's as simple as like giving someone a hug or saying like you look like you could do with a walk I'm popping down Tesco, come with, you know, something yeah. like that, you know, because that's the problem, you get like a lot of people, because you can't, you can't get the motivation for anything, people go like, oh, a bit of exercise, that'll sort you out, it's like, oh, God. yeah, but I can't get out of fucking bed. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but then, yeah, I mean, the, the worst, the thing that I hate hearing the most is when people come up to you and say, how are you, are you alright? Mm. I'd much rather somebody didn't ask me, and somebody just say, oh, you're not dead then. Mm. You know, and I appreciate that really dark, yeah. cutting sense of humour. Yeah. Whether or not you think that's a sense of humour, to me, yeah. that is beautiful. What that person has just said, it's, mm. it's, it's like a reflection of the best poetry in the world, or mm. the best song you ever heard, and you think, oh yeah. wow, hearing that, oh you're not dead then, it's just like, right, I've done another day. Yeah. You know, and take every day as it comes. And for me, whereas... With with you or with somebody else, having a hug is great. For me, it's like, no, don't touch me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> However crazy that sounds, but it's like, don't don't come near, don't touch me. I agree with you on the sense of humour, and I think a lot of people will kind of like walk on eggshells and pussyfoot around yeah. people, but I think uh, a lot of the time people would actually quite like people to just be kind of like, let's make this funny, you yeah. know. Because when you realise that, you know, the joke is on you, it makes things a bit kind of easier yeah. to deal with when I when I first went out to see mates for a night out um after my suicide attempt the first thing someone said was nice of you to turn up <laughs> I, I I just thought I thought it was brilliant you know yeah. I had no idea if it was intentional or not but it was, it was perfect and yeah, I was yeah, just yeah. like yeah you know that's that's what I need you know that's that's fine I'm, I'm cool with that I you love know. that I mean yeah and, and, and people going like <laughs> How are you doing? I'm like, yeah. fuck off, kind of I, thing. I can't deal but, with that. Yeah. You know, I, and I can't. And everybody's different. There are going to be people that love that and that they need to hear that and mm. that that makes sense to them. When I I, I, I develop quite a strong drink, I, I, I don't drink a lot mm. these days. I develop quite a strong drinking habit. I wouldn't say I was an alcoholic at all. That would be overstepping the mark. Yeah. But I developed, I drunk a lot. From a person that didn't drink, mm. for like a good two years, two and a half years, I just drunk excessively every single day. Mm. And it helped. Um, n not at all. Uh, but <laughs> at the time, at the time, and when, yeah. when, I'd, when I'd finished drinking and I'd had the support of my friends and everybody had sort of, you know, rallied around and sort of ensured that, um, that I was okay, 
and then everything was fine. One of my mates for my birthday came up and gave me a can and went, do you want a can? <laughs> Just everybody was like, don't give him alcohol. This <laughs> one of my mates went, can? I was like, yeah, cheers. Drunk it and went, oh my God, that's horrible. Yeah. You know, but it was the only, per and I remember that because it's everybody else was like, no, 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 don't give him alcohol. Don't yeah. buy him this. Don't give him this. Don't give him money. Whereas what all I wanted was somebody to say, do you want a beer? Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting you bring that up and say like it, it helped not at all, you know, yeah. And, yeah. And, and I think that's the thing for a while, Short it, term. for a while it is, mm. you know, yeah. and then suddenly it's not, Yeah. but like a bridge is perfectly serviceable till it collapses, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's, yeah. that's the kind of whole thing. Like if you go like, right, I can get Sorry. this out of my head for a little bit. But the the I, moment's going, the moment's going, what you just said about the bridge, that, oh, damn it, I've just lost it. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I just interrupted you in a very serious thing, and I just want, what did you say about a bridge? Um, the bridge is perfectly serviceable until it collapses. That's a structurally sound sentence. That, oh, 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 nice, nice. Sorry, carry on. I'm surprised I remembered that, it's not even scripted. No. Um, <laughs> no, I mean... Some of this stuff like probably does come out sounding semi scripted because I have had similar conversations like with other people before. So there are certain things that I probably like hit on like that's a good analogy. Yeah. And that kind of thing. But yeah, I mean drink drinking and, you know, drugs and any kind of self abuse are the the kind of they're the the first in line, like when it gets to that point. Mm. Like if you're if you're sinking, depression was the new GTA game. Drink problems, drug problems, self harming. They would be the assholes queuing overnight to come and get it, you know. And and you just they're just there waiting because they're like, we're not gonna pounce. Mm. We're just gonna be here. And they'll come to us. Yeah, sooner or later, think. somebody's going to go around the corner and think, you know what, I'm going to buy six cans. Yeah. And it's it's interesting, like, there's this kind of view that people have of, like, oh, I'm not going to give money to, like, homeless people because they're just going to spend it on drink and drugs. I would probably, I would go out on a limb and say that probably the, the majority of people who are on the streets aren't on the streets because they were junkies or alcoholics, but are that as a result of being yeah. on the street. Yeah. You know, and I think it's one of those things. I have known people who have suffered with depression. They literally never drank in their life. They'd never touched any drugs. They'd had like clean living. That had just been them. And, and then suddenly something hit them. And before any of us knew it, they were alcoholics. And it, it's just, you know, yeah. it's like, how did that happen to you? Yeah. And like, you know, train spotting, for example, in that film, there's Tommy who hates them all, like, for the heroin abuse and that kind of thing. And then his life goes to shit and he's the one that suddenly gets on it and dies as a result. Yeah. And it's just that kind of like, you know, I think people try and say that addiction is like, it's just something you shouldn't do, but it's often a result of something else that's going on, you know. I mean, obviously, you know, it, it can happen because you just want to take drugs and have fun and you go too far. But I think most of the time it's people who are just kind of like, I don't know what else to do. So I'm going to try and... Yeah. ignore everything for a while and then that takes over and then the problem is after a while your body will develop something of an immunity to it and it's not that you're not still physically showing the signs of being drunk for example you could still be pissed as fuck and people will be able to tell yeah, yeah. but your head's gone like I can see through this now. Yeah, exactly. And then you're just kind of like, now I'm an alcoholic and I'm still fucked and I'm down again. Yeah. And like, you don't, yeah. you know, that's the point where you go like, what happens? You know, and I didn't, I didn't get to where I got to as a result of any kind of excessive alcoholism or anything like that. But I did drink a fair bit, you know, but it's, you know, when stuff gets on top of you, that's, that's when you go like, right, I actually can no longer escape what's going on. Yeah. And that's when you go, I want out. Yeah. That's that, it. That's the thing. I mean, the at the start, it's you start drinking, and that sort of quietens everything down. Or from, mm. from my perspective, that was what happened. And then you kind of drink more because you think, oh, hang on, this is great. Yeah. So yeah. if I drink further on uh, earlier in the morning, 
then I haven't got to put up with this <clears throat> all day. Oh, this is lovely. First week, hey, check, nobody's noticed. Or so you think. Yeah. And then you start realising that you're not shaving as much, and then you're putting weight on, and then you start to smell. Yeah. And then things, it, everything slowly starts to, because the, 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 um, the dominoes start to fall. Yeah, yeah. And certain people start looking at you, and then the people that used to ring you no longer ring you, and then you're thinking, oh, what the hell? So you're drinking more because that depresses the hell out of you, that you have got nobody mm. then. And then it just, it's one thing after another. I think, yeah, and, and, and I think for me, I... The, the thought of stopping drinking or the thought of stopping uh, doing any sort of narcotics was the fact that if I stopped, then I would hurt. Yeah. Then you would have the insides, then you'd have the vomiting, then you would have the not being able to eat. So mm. you're vomiting, you're, you're empty, you can't drink anything, you can't eat anything. Then comes the, the crushing stomach cramps. Yeah. And you're thinking to yourself, well... What the hell? If I just have another can, or if I have another yeah. twelve, or if I if I chuck some more Charlie up my nose, or whatever. Yeah, what's then... it worth to stop? Exactly. Yeah. Like... You know, it's fine. It's fine. I've done it for the, for this many years, and I'm not dead. It's mm. all right. And then one day, something happens, and then you look at yourself. You catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror. Mm. You're 22 stone, or, or do you know what I mean? And you look yeah. at yourself, and you're going, "Oh my god, what the hell?" Who the fuck are you? Exactly. You know? Yeah. And then like you try and talk to somebody, and you say, "Why did? Why the hell didn't you say something?" And this person says, what? Really? Talk to you? Mm. What? There was no getting through to you. Yeah. You know, what the hell are we meant to do? Half the time we didn't want you here, you were just turning up. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's like we go to this pub because we knew you weren't going to be there. And then half an hour later, you turned up. This is mm. why we all drunk up and then left. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And it, it's, it's horrible to hear that, but it, it helps you come through the other end, I think. It helps you pull through slightly. But it helped me. Yeah, thought, it's well, yeah. When you when you sort of realise something, then you it's it's either going to give you an impetus to give up completely, or to go. I need to work on this. Yeah, I need to sort something out. And it can go either way, you know. And you know, I mean, everything we're discussing at the moment is based on our perspectives. There are so many people out there going through, you know, similar mental health issues, and their experience might be completely totally different from different. ours. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And that's something we can't even like crack into. But yeah. like, at least if you're sort of open about your own experience and your own perspective, yeah. people know it's not just them. You know, it, you know, you can't really sort of tell people like, oh, this is how to get through it, mm. because people have to. Do it themselves, yeah, which is which is quite hard <coughs> when you fucking hate yourself and don't think you're any good at anything. Yeah, um, yeah. like that's that's the worst thing in the world, isn't it? Like that's yeah, quite a dark yeah, thought. You have to help <laughs> yourself out of depression. I can't even make a jam sandwich. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, that's a really difficult place to be. And I, I found that like was 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 quite quite hard because you know. I, I'm not really that good at a lot of stuff. Like, I think I'm fairly good at my job, which no. is no. Oh, so I'm not even that helpful. No. But like, you know, like I yeah. know I can. I know I can play music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, Jesus Christ, yes. And I know. Sorry, that was massively <laughs> fanboy. <that. laughs> Calm down. Um, and uh, yeah, I know. I know I can do that. Um, I know I can write fairly well um i'm fairly handy in a pub quiz you know <laughs> so, handy in a pub quiz i'm handy in a pub brawl <laughs> <laughs> if we don't win we'll get those winnings um but yeah it's these sort of like things but like for the most part i'm not that good at a lot of stuff like likewise i can cook basics yeah um my fiance heather is really really good at cooking she's really creative with cooking she knows what goes with what i've always just kind of known how to make like very basic things and for a long time like when we sort of got to, i think it took a couple of years for me to even make anything for her because i was just you know i said to her straight away like oh yeah i can cook kind of thing and then when i saw what her cooking was i was just kind of like I'm going to look so cook. shit in comparison to this. I said the same to Hannah. Hannah was like, when we first got together, I was like, yeah, I can cook. And she went, oh, that's, that's awesome. And then I had, to, she made me chili con carne. And I was yeah. like, oh my God, shit, I can't cook. <laughs> I can't cook at all. 
And then she's like, right, now it's your turn. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, right, okay, that's fine. You stay in the living room. Don't come out the living room. You just stay there. I was like, look at Does this off. microwave have a silent setting? <laughs> like, oh, all the packet <laughs> stuff. I was like, rice, rice, rice. <laughs> yes, <laughs> shit, is on a date. Uh, <laughs> and she, yeah, and that was it. And I just kind of served it. There we go, have it. I was like, fish and chips. We are done. You know, I, I mean, I was, I, was good, I was good enough at cooking to, like, survive on my own in the wild, yeah. kind of thing. And, like, Heather's actually... Hell has actually like shown me how to do things now, and I have like improved, and I can like make a nice meal for her and stuff. Yeah. But like my repertoire is still fairly small. Um, you I'm, do, you do. I've seen you cook toast in work. That is, or cook bread in work to equal toast. That is, that that's that's good. It's a skill. It is. Yeah. So your hot cross buns the other day as well. God, they smell nice. <laughs> I take I, I take full advantage of a. Of a four slice toaster. That's um, good. Because I'm a fat bastard. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, because I was kind of like, oh, I'm not really good at that much stuff. Like, when I was sort of like going through it quite heavily, sort of in my late teens, early 20s, I really kind of threw myself into music because I was like trying to like trick myself to a point like, if you do one of these things that you are good at, you're going to think that you're good at things. Yeah. And like, it didn't really work because I found myself going like, this is one of the, the, the few things I'm good at. Did you do the same as me? Thing. Did you? And like, I just ended up going like, you know, going on stage, playing shows, people afterwards going like, that was wicked, amazing, cheers, like really enjoyed it kind of thing. Yeah. And in the back of my head, I'm going like, yeah, you're fucking useless. <laughs> like, because they were going like, your music's really good. And I'm like, what about the other hundred thousand things that everyone else can do and I can't? You know, I can't even do a Lego castle without the fucking instructions. Like, it's I, like, put, I put together a Lego Minecraft set the other week. Yeah. It's a, one, I think one of the hardest things I've ever done. I'm 34. Get a grip. <laughs> I'm sitting there with the instructions going, this makes no sense. Why is this making no sense? And then I pushed it off the table. I was like, nope. And then I was like, God, I got dogs. They're going to eat the pits, the, eat all the bits. Right, i got to get up, collect mm. everything. Right, let's do this again. And I'm looking at it going, why can't I do this? I really like doing like jigsaws and things. I'm quite good at a jigsaw and I don't mind if it takes ages to do it because I do get it done. I find kind of like a sort of like, it's quite a therapeutic process to like gradually sort of like put something together. But when I was little... And I used to do jigsaws. I got to a point where I'd like graduated to the point of like a fifteen hundred piece jigsaw, and it suddenly became a chore. I don't know if it like coincided with when I started to first kind of like feel the issues with depression or anything like that. But I started to like feel a bit shit about doing jigsaws, which I was like, oh, I've always been good at these, but this is really difficult kind yeah. of thing. And sort of like replacing it, like it's really bad. Like I, I didn't realize for a while and then like sort of looking back on it I kind of clicked one day that it wasn't just jigsaws I was kind of like doing the same thing with a lot of stuff like get like 150 pieces in as well as the edges of this 1500 piece jigsaw and I'd just be looking at it and going like oh maybe I'll go back to that book I haven't finished <laughs> and then <laughs> you kind of do that and you just keep replacing things with other things that you don't finish and I think it, it, I don't know if it's, there's any kind of like psychology to it or anything because, you know, psych, psychology is another thing that I'm not really very good at. Yeah. But, um, but like, I think a lot of it is kind of, oh, I'm not finishing this and just starting things and then not finishing them. And like, after a while you start to think like, is this kind of like a metaphor for what's going on? Because I'm doing this stuff to avoid really working on myself in the first place. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why a lot of stuff doesn't really get done when you're in those kinds of situations yeah. because you're just kind of like I'm not doing anything anyway yeah. and it's really difficult to kind of get to a point and go like right I am going to do something and like you say like you know when you look in the mirror one day and go like I need to do something about it but it could as easily be a case of like I give up completely now yeah absolutely it, it can go either way it can yeah I mean I I think I've made a lot of promises to people that I'm not going to try and kill myself ever again. So I've kind of got to stick to that now. And that's fine. I'm happy to to stay alive, you know, for myself and for other people. 
Um, but that's progress. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean that there aren't going to be, like, odd days where I think, like, oh, I want out kind of thing. But, like, I think I've managed to kind of get myself to a point where I'm aware enough of what it is when it kicks in to go, don't go down that road. You made that promise. Stick to it. You know? And I, th I think it's... It's quite remarkable, actually, like, as well as, like, having the pride in yourself, like, for being able to sort of, like, carry on. I think it's quite remarkable to see how brilliant, like, people who are close to you are in those kinds of situations. Because, like, when I first started seeing Heather, I told her quite early on about the fact that I'd tried to kill myself. And I think, um, sorry, and I think, like, I just wanted to be really open about it. Uh, because I thought to myself, like, if she doesn't know, it's not fair. And it would really fucking suck if I got her six months into this and then, then told, told her. her. Yeah, exactly. You know, and she's, you know, she's been very honest with me about that stuff and said, like, you know what, when you told me, I was kind of like, I think I'm going to run away. But, like, she's got, she's a really, she's a really great person and she, she, you know, she's always said, like, you shouldn't, like, just ditch someone after a date or two you know, and you've got to, like, give people a chance, as she did, and she's, you know, she's stuck with me, and, like, I've obviously had, like, a few problems with my depression, like, here and there, luckily no, sort of, like, major slumps or anything like that, but, like, I think it's really kind of, like, I think people, sort of, like, do deal with stuff, and they do get on with it, and I think it's because they know, like, you could be anyone, they could be anyone, Yeah. you know, and you, you know, if if people sort of are understanding, then they're willing to to give a bit more, and that's a help as long as you realise it's there, kind of thing. So that's nice. <laughs> that was a weird. <laughs> that's nice. Um, that was a weird way to sort of tail, tail <laughs> off there. <laughs> but no, you know what I mean. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's 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 good to see that other people can sort of cope with it. You know, I I was a bit concerned about my mum, like whether or not she was really going to handle stuff well. See, um, this, yeah, this is a totally different side because you were concerned for everybody else, whereas yeah. I didn't want to see anybody. Yeah. You know, I distanced myself from a lot of people, my family, everything. I sort of went on my own. My mate Ben was quite good because he came into the hospital to see me, um, and he didn't he didn't pander to it at all either. He's had problems with depression. He's actually yeah. quite a good person to speak to when it comes to that kind of sensitive stuff. Um, but he came into the hospital and, and quite wonderfully said, let's play Trivial Pursuit and didn't even let me win. Which I, which I thought was amazing. I was, you know, at the time I was obviously thinking, you prick. <laughs> but but it, was, it was really, really nice yeah. like, that he was like, I know you're in a bad place, mm. but nothing's changing. Yeah. So let's I just do it. And I really appreciated that. That, that, that is good because you, you, you didn't want him to let you win. Yeah, you know, because as far as they're concerned, nothing is out, nothing else has altered. Yeah, and that's what you need. You need to know that you can just pick up and just carry on, and there's not going to be that sort of thing as oh, we can't really tell Doug because otherwise, you know, he might go and try and top himself again. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It, yeah, you don't need that. Whereas I had a load of great mates as well, same as you, that would just kind of like tell me exactly how it is. Mm. You know, it was weird being in that moment, just going like, you know. I don't know if I'm coming back from this yet or whatever, but at least I can add Trivial Pursuit to that other list of things that I can't fucking do. <laughs> um, <laughs> that list is getting longer, mate. <laughs> <laughs> getting longer. Ending yeah. sentences appears to be a problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that, that is another one as well. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's the same. Yeah, I, 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 I really fit in the same thing as you so much that there are limited things that I can do and very yeah. trivial things confuse the hell out of me. Yeah. Like... Um, uh, for argument's sake, like say washing the dishes and putting the dishes away, I'll wash the dishes and then just leave them there, and it l it looks on the outset like as if it's just a really trivial, lazy thing when you yeah. put it in the cupboard. But at the time, it doesn't occur to me because my my thing that I'm accomplishing is I'm washing the dishes, mm. and in that word, there isn't putting them in the cupboard. That's another yeah. thing. So I'm very I I don't know what the word is actually. I'm very I'm. I take things on face value. Yeah. If somebody used to say, this is a spade, and pass me a trowel, then I would still say it's a spade. 
Yeah. <laughs> because that person has said it's a speed. <laughs> so, do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's very much, what, right, John, do you mind washing the dishes? I don't yeah, that's fine. And then a couple of minutes later, Han will come out and go, why are you going to put them in the cupboard? Ah, yeah, I'll do that now. But it mm. hasn't occurred to me that that's what she wants me to do. Yeah. So I'll just go and look at things and go, yeah, I'll wash the dishes. Yeah, I've done that now. Mm. You know? Um, so yeah, I understand that would be quite a helpful quality in like a child, you know, to make it like eat healthily. Like, Not when you're still it, full. Give it a bit of fruit and go like, this is a cake. Yeah. <laughs> and then the child yeah. wants cake all the yeah, time. Exactly, oh. which is actually broccoli, you know. <laughs> but yeah, this is the thing. I mean, it's quite endearing for a kid. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, oh, look, bless. When you're 34, it's a bloody pain in the ass. Yeah. You know, because it 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 is quite simply a thing of people when they look at you and go, well, he slapped ash. Uh, you know, he hasn't done this properly. That's not the case. You asked me to do A, and I've done A. B is put them away. That is not in the sentence you've given me. You know what I mean? And then I, I then go, you know, in, in on myself again then. Heather had to kind of, like, say to me, like, you need to hoover sometimes, yeah. you know. I'm actually a very tidy person, and that's fine. As he sits in a room for but... shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I, I just kind of, like... I tidy, like, all at once a lot of the time, you know, and I think I was kind of, like, not realising what was going on, so if she was off work, while I was at work, I would come home and the place would be tidy and, you know, she's made dinner and that kind of thing, and I'm like, oh, well, thank you, you know, this is really good, and, like, I wasn't quite clicking that that was what was going on, and then I was having my day off. I was just making sure everything was, like, you know, tidy. But, like, I wasn't, like, doing, like, the hoovering or yeah. wiping down every surface or anything like that. And, obviously, she was coming home from a stressful day and going, nothing's being done around here. Mm. And it, you know, it was really bad on my part, but it was, it was sort of realising, like, shit, like, she's right. Like, if it's her day off, if it's my day off and she's working, sorry, I should get up in the morning have some breakfast, have a bit of a chill, and then I should get the place together, and make it nice, you know, because no one wants to come home to to a shit tip, which it never really is. Um, but like, you know, if you walk in the door, at our place you walk in and you're in the kitchen straight away, so if you walked in the kitchen and saw like, dirty dishes stacked up, or like the floor was a bit messy and hadn't been wiped down or whatever, you're gonna go like, well this is depressing to come into, yeah. you know. So it's a case of like, I, you know, I do that now, but like, I didn't automatically think of it, yeah. despite being a tidy person, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, like I say, I would keep things tidy, but like, I think because I'm quite anally retentive, like, a lot of the time, like, my idea of tidiness is just neatly aligned, you know, so that kind of happens. <laughs> it's like a weird thing, like, I would, I would literally be sat there at home, like, just going like, oh that book's sticking out a bit on the bookcase. I'll level them out a bit. I'm not thinking to myself, like, this floor could do the hoover. See, no, <laughs> yeah. See, no, with that, I, I, I have fun with things like that because, and I think it's all started from, from the sort of, the, 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 the sort of, the bipolar disorder thing. Mm. But, it's like, in work, people will, will put things out in a particular line and it'll be very neat. Um, and I'll just walk along and just move it. You know what I mean? If I was around <laughs> you, and if you pushed that book in, book in, when you turned around, I'd pull the book out again. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And it's, it's, things like that, I think that's hilarious. It's not at all. But, it, you know, it's just something like that. It's just, it's just, I don't know what it is. I can't even explain it. It's just a sort of thing that I just look at it and go, would it be funny if, if I did that? Yes, it will. And, and it's not at all. I wouldn't do it, because I know it would send me mental, but I've always thought it'd be really good fun. Like, if you were house-sitting for somebody to move every single thing in their house, by like just a minute. Oh, see, no, that does so sound when like they, fun. When they came home, yeah. everything looked right, but they felt weird. Just felt like, like, whoa, hang on. <laughs> you can just. It's like a really <laughs> nasty mind game. I wouldn't do it because yeah. if someone did it to me, I'd go fuck oh, I'd, nuts. I'd have but to burn like, the police down. I'd be like, no, yeah. sorry, come on. Call the police, that's it, bye now. But like, but like, it always occurred to me, like, that, if, if you really wanted to mess with someone, yeah, yeah. like, that's a way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. But it's cruel. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's 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 the very sort of the very sort of animalistic part of my brain. I think that's just like, well, that'd yeah. be funny. It's not funny at all. And if it happened to me, I would go ballistic. But it's just like if I see somebody do that, I'm just like, oh, that. 
I just get this overwhelming urge to pull that book back out, just a little bit, mm. I, or you know, just turn one book upside down or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just really, I don't know. It's so it's such a childish, weird, horrible thing, but it's just like, oh, yeah, I really, and sometimes I do it to myself. <laughs> which, is, which is really quite strange. It's just like when I'm drunk, I come home or something like that, I have a few drinks, not drunk, but come home and I'm like, oh, I'll move this car and the next morning I'll wake up and be like, why? why? <laughs> that's, that's really annoying. You know, it's just, yeah, I, I don't know, I can't explain it, but again, it's one of those sort of really weird, odd things Yeah. that I, I take a great delight in. <laughs> I think, I don't know, yeah, it is, it is horrible. I think, I think some of the things, you know, like you say, it's not funny. I mean, the reality is, it yeah. is funny. Yeah. It is actually very funny, yeah. but you're not supposed to. I've got a warped sense it, of humour. Because it, it's also mean. Yeah, it, like you have. Thing. And this is the thing, I look at sense of humour, yeah. and I think, oh, isn't that hilarious? And somebody stands next to me and goes, oh my God, you're a monster. I'm like, no, no, but that to me is funny. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I If I if I see somebody... Um, yeah, go sorry, on, just I'll answer your phone. Just grab this no, quickly. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, honey. <laughs> yeah, not bad, you? What sort of time? Okay, I'm still up at John's at the moment, but I can probably get sort of down to you. Um, yeah, I mean, I can obviously. Okay, no, that's cool. Like, we're the sort of best, but yeah, just because we're still sort of um, still in the middle of it at the moment. You know I take too much time over everything, so. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, honey. Um, well, okay, well let me know when you get out, and if I am sort of like on the way at that point, then I'll let you know, or otherwise I'll see you at home. Alright, love you. Bye. We can wrap this up whenever you want to, buddy. Oh, it's no if, rush. If you need to go, then that's fine. I'll just sit here and... Uh... Talk to myself. <laughs> what subject are we on? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if I see somebody fall over in public and face plant themselves, I will make myself not laugh. Even though in the back of my mind I'm going like, that's fucking hilarious. See, but I can't laugh because I'm also very aware that someone has just possibly quite badly hurt, hurt themselves. themselves. Yeah. So, you know, when and I last manifest, saw that... Yeah, it's manifested itself in this, like, big love of slapstick. Yes. Like, and, like, I know a lot of people go, like, why did you watch slapstick? It's really silly. And, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just going, like, oh, I just really like it because I don't really want to admit people I love slapstick because I want to laugh at people when they fall over in the street. Yeah. <laughs> this is the thing. A few weeks ago, I did see somebody fall over mm. in the street, and I walked over to them to help them up. And it occurred to me when I was helping them up, and when somebody else came from the other side to help them up, so we both grabbed an arm, that I was absolutely outright just laughing in their face. <laughs> and the other guy was looking at me and frowning, frowning, and I was like, we'll just, we'll just help, 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 help this woman up. And as I'm helping her, I'm going, ha, 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 are you okay? <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, what sort of a person am I? That I walk over to somebody, yeah. and initially, my brain went, help them. Yes, help them. Pick yeah. them up, and I'm laughing at them. As I'm picking oh, do you know what? I was mortified. Absolutely mortified to the point where I had to apologise to the guy, apologise to the woman. I was like, I'm really sorry. She didn't know what was happening, bless her. She was all right, she was fine. But I just felt like an absolute monster for just laughing at this person as they'd fallen over. But I, I, I get that. I get what you're saying. But then that comes from that sort of like dark humour. Yeah. Again, doesn't it? Like it comes from like a sort of a, a, a place that may exist as a manifestation of something else. It's like when I found the bin. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I, I've got this 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 real nasty knack of being absorbed in what I'm doing at the time. So yeah. if somebody's texts me, then I will text them back. Or if somebody sent me a comment on YouTube, I will comment them back as quickly as I can. And I have to get it done, or the goblin in my head turns around and just niggles at me. Yeah. And so when I was walking home, oh, a long time ago, it wasn't that long ago? It was a while ago. Um, so about two hours ago, wasn't it? We just yeah. <laughs> <Pretty> <laughs> just came down the road with you. I was there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah true. And I'm, I'm standing there answering my phone, you know, 
texting and whatever. And I looked up and I actually, at this point, I'd walked down the street. I'd hit a bin and yeah. I was three quarters of the way inside this bin uh, because I didn't realise where I was. But around me, everybody was pissing themselves off in because yeah, yeah. the guy had just almost fallen in the bin while texting, not aware of his surroundings. Yeah. But again, I didn't find that embarrassing because my sense of humour is so twisted and dark mm. that when everybody else was pointing and laughing, I laughed with them because I was like, oh, do you know what? Yeah, that is yeah. going to be funny. I walked into, um, you know, the sort of like metal, <laughs> like, loop things that people like tie their bikes to. Uh, Kensington, Kensington poles, Kensington. Yes, Kensi- like Kensington. I'm just going to keep on saying Kensington. Okay. Kensington <laughs> bars. Kensington. Something like that. It's Kensington. Bike, bike hoops. Bike hoops. Um, They're nasty if you catch them on your shin. I walked into one the other day, right? <laughs> and this is what I suddenly realised. I not really. I know that they're there. I know that they are places for people to to attach their bikes to and stuff like that. But I realised that I'm not aware of where they are unless I can see a bike. Because <laughs> the, the bike is taller than them, right? So my like eye level while I was walking... Yeah, but you can like, look down, so, Doug. Your head yeah. can move down. Or even walking. your head, your eyes can move down. <laughs> I know, but like the eye level that I was walking at, like I was just kind of like sort of thing, and I didn't, I didn't see the top of a bicycle, and I nearly did like a flip right over the top. And I was just kind of like, oh, that was... That was bad. It was annoying as well. Like, yeah. it, like I was, I was sober. Like, <laughs> See, that, if, if, you, if you were a bit pissed and you did something like that, you'd be like, "Fair it's play." It's fine. It, you yeah. know, this is but my you fault. You also wouldn't give a shit when you picked yourself up, up, up off the floor and you wouldn't look around you to see yeah. who was laughing. You just kind of go, "Oh, that's." Who's put that there? And then you just walk off. <laughs> you know, whereas if you're sober and you do that, you're walking up, you're kind of going, "Oh my god, who's seen me?" Oh, just three hundred people in the middle of Bristol. Yeah. It's fine. You know. <laughs> That I've yeah I I've I've got I now walk like five hundred meters before I can even enter a shop. I thought that was the start like, of a song. Sorry. <laughs> I would walk five hundred meters. meters. Yeah. And I well we can't sing the song because of copyright. But yeah. That would. Five hundred more. <laughs> Out the door. Yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm just wondering if there's some way of like doing like a completely off the wall, very specific metric version. <laughs> well, I've got I've got about six metronomes, so I'm sure we could sort of set them off at different times to sort of all in the same key play the do, song. We should do it the other way around. We should like flip it backwards, do like a sort of like archaic sounding version, so sort of like medieval. Well, there's two bases behind you. And you've got like, a lead guitar in just the start. Start like rather than miles, like convert it into yards or something <laughs> like that, and it'd be like ye oldy proclaimers. <laughs> yeah, but we need some actual wood instruments for that. Yeah, that's true. Also, was was Scotland a thing in olden times? Did it exist? I think it was ye old Scot land. Ah, right, okay. And I think that's how they said it. And I base that on absolutely nothing. <laughs> No, I think I think it was probably a place. It was definitely a place. But it's, we know it's it there now. It's just definitely <laughs> yeah. a place. It was definitely there. <laughs> I love Scotland. I think it's amazing. My I, I have to say that because my grandmother's Scottish, but I do I do love the place. I think it's a it's a great place. It's really funny because a lot of people say like, oh, I wouldn't go to Glasgow. It's supposed to be quite rough, isn't it? You go there, it's not. It's it's actually really nice. It's, it's really really nice. Has, I mean, they they do Dad's have like Glasgow, some kind of sort of like. Catholic, Protestant, mm. Rangers, Celtic kind of arguments or even Celtic. at times, you know, and like uh, those have maybe been a bit rough back in the day. But like you know, if you go there and like sort of like talk to people, they're so nice, yeah, so friendly, and I I've always really kind of like enjoyed that about the place. But it's really strange that like people. Oh, oh, don't go there. It's like pretty rough and stuff like that. I'm like, it's really nice. We were having this conversation city. walking down the road. Mm. Come to here, weren't we? About 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 where, yeah, where in about, Bristol? Where, where yeah. in Bristol I live? And I was told categorically, don't move there. It's <laughs> terrible. And I've been here five years. I think it's lovely. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Like you used to hear like horror stories back in the day about like Nottingham. All right. Like, Nottingham used to be like considered quite a rough place they had quite a high crime rate. Is that where uh, Robin Hood was from? Long time. Uh, yeah, yeah, that 
Yeah, East Midlands. Um, I think I read on Wikipedia once that it was the seventh largest urban conurbation <laughs> in the UK. Um, I don't know if that's changed in okay. recent times or if I'm completely misremembering, right. but I just quite like how the sentence sounds. So. What is a conurbation? Uh, it's like um, a, 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 an area that's lived in, essentially. A habitat. Yeah, like a dwelling. Or mm, not no, because that, that, was, that would be but within an area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, like for example, a village would an be an estate. A village would be a conurbation. So a town would be I a conurbation. Okay. A city would be a conurbation yeah. because they're areas that house multiple people in various homes. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, there used to be some sort of like horror stories back in the day about Nottingham, and I went to a few gigs at Rock City in my late teens and stuff and and you know there was occasionally a bit of sort of roughness and stuff like that so it's one of those things of like people go oh don't go there kind of thing but I know people that have moved there and they're like it's nice yeah you know you know and I I think that's the thing like one person has a bad experience and tells you a horror story and you just kind of believe them I could tell and then you, you actually go to places yeah it's like, oh, actually quite nice I could tell you five places in South Wales not to go because when I was growing up it was a nightmare. Yeah. Now, I know people that live there have raised families and it's beautiful. <laughs> but it is all about the when you grow up, oh, excuse me, in a place, don't go here, don't do this, don't do that in these particular areas. But then yeah. over time, they change because people then start to buy their own homes and they start to look after areas and things. And it, 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 it does all change. My, my rule of thumb generally is that places are probably going to be all right as long as the buses don't refuse to go there. That's... Like kind of it, yeah. You know, there are. Uh, They've been trying to pull my bus service for a couple of years, but uh, <laughs> we've still got it for now. <laughs> there have been places like where I've like been. Like I've, I had a mate move somewhere once, and like I'm not going to say where because <laughs> that would be mean. Um, but yeah, a mate of mine moved to a place, and I was on my way to see him, and he was like, "He's a bit rough round here, but like you'll be all right. Like once you're in the house, kind of thing." Yeah, yeah. And like. I got there, I got on the bus to go to where he was, and like, I went up to the guy, like, and I was like, oh, is the, is the next stop, because my mate had just told me what bus service to get on, so I did that, and I was like, oh, is the next stop, you know, and he was like, oh, no, we don't go that far. <laughs> I was like, what? He was like, yeah, we, we, we don't go there. We don't, we don't go there, kind of thing. I oh, was like, God. oh, maybe I should have got a cab, and he was like, they wouldn't go there either. Oh, what? <laughs> no way. Like, what? Kind of thing. And I basically got off this bus at like the furthest point and called my mate and he was like, Oh good Jerry, I'll come and pick you up. I was like, You could have warned me about this <laughs> And he like picked me up and like drove me right to his door and we went in and like absolutely fine like where he was and stuff like that. And to be fair, like on the whole it, it you know, we I didn't see anything bad yeah, yeah. there, but because it was quite a high crime area, like you know, public services are going like no. Nah. Not a chance. Yeah. Kind of thing. So I think that's kind of like my rule of thumb. As long as you can get there on public transport, it's probably going to be all right. I've never thought of that at all. I've just because I, yeah, I don't know. I tend to walk everywhere. Mm. So I tend to like you. you you'll find me walking like it, there's a bus stop, a road away, but I'll walk three miles to get another bus because that bus takes me where I've got to be and I'm going to change. So I I don't know I I don't know. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good rule of thumb you have though. If, a bu if public services don't go there, then... Yeah. I, do, I, I try and walk places. If Heather and I are going into town together, we'll get on the bus to go into town. Like, it's only like a sort of 20, 25 minute walk from where we are. But, yeah. like, if we're together, we can sit down on the bus and have a chat. Yeah. Kind of thing. Which is uh, it's a little easier in that respect. But if I'm, you know, by myself, I'll probably just walk it. Yeah. You know... Because if I sit down on the bus and I'm not actually active and walking, then I might have to have a conversation with myself and that's somewhere I don't really like to go too often. <laughs> it wasn't until a mate of mine put a thing up the other day, like, sort of like, ah, oh, for those of you from this area, like, who remember just how good this band were. And it was, like, really flattering to, like, see something like that. But that was the point where I suddenly went, like, but it wasn't your band, yeah? No, no, no. <laughs> no, it was, it was, it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like, I sort of looked at it, and I was like, you know what, I am really proud of that. And then it sort of, like, was like, oh, it was 13 years ago. And then it was like, what have I done since then? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and this, like, creeping, like, thing came in going, like, what 
have you been doing with your life? And I just quickly kind of went like, I have a full-time job, I'm a responsible adult, I'm doing really well for myself, and I'll put on the fucking album and see if it still sounds all right. <laughs> <laughs> was it really 13 years ago? Yeah, 2005. Jesus. It was... Uh, it was it was quite a weird time. We were part of a sort of like local scene uh, in the part of Wiltshire that we were based in, and we we didn't want to be like just that scene, you know. We wanted to kind of do a lot, so we we really pushed to sort of like play all around the country and that kind of thing, and it meant that we we ended up moving towards quite a sort of like accessible sound. Um, as the music itself is, you know, it's it's not like, I don't like saying things are heavy because you always encounter like one prick who loves his extreme metal who just goes like, that's not heavy. Thank you. I, uh, <laughs> um, but like in terms of like the kind of music it is, yeah, it, is yeah, yeah. it is quite heavy. I was astounded because you know? I'm not hearing it. And, to, and again, I made that foolish, foolish assumption that just because something is labelled indie doesn't mean it's going to suck. And when yeah. I saw that it was indie and I was like, oh, this is going to be terrible. And I clicked play and I was astounded at just how much unlike indie it sounded. Yeah. But the, um, but yeah, the pop hooks are yeah. definitely in there. And I think that was like intentional because we wanted to like be able to like play a broader... Spectrum. We wanted to play you shows in the country. Down. Yeah, yeah. We didn't want to just be part of a local scene. No, yeah. our local scene was not all the same. I'm not saying that by any standard, but there was like a sort of like there was a definite kind of like edge towards specific kind of music. And like you know, I I don't mean to like do people down and say like, oh they were all doing like variations on a theme, but like when you have a scene that sort of springs up and you know, people become part of it and people are enjoying it, then you do kind of end up influencing each other. Mm. So there was sort of like a, a similar kind of sound. And because people were part of this local scene, it actually gave those those other groups like an opportunity to push this kind of more personal artistic bent, which I was actually, I thought was actually quite wonderful to see because these people were going out there and going like, we're not making pop music for the masses. We're making stuff that we really feel and stuff that we really believe. And, yeah. I, and I really, really liked it. I really enjoyed it. But because we wanted to push a bit further, we had to start writing like pop songs. Because the minute you're out of that scene, you go and play somewhere else, they might have their own scene and be like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Kind of thing. So we so we did that. And it was really nice like sort of like playing different places in the country and still getting like a positive reaction from audiences and stuff you know them just saying like oh that was really good you know and that that was you know it was a really nice sort of time and it was kind of it was interesting for me because I'd always played like in ways that I wasn't being particularly commercial or anything like that so to actually sort of go in the other direction like it made me start to kind of like see the art that is in pop and I and I really really like that, and it's it it seems strange that I never really kind of clicked before because like I I love pop music I love it to death it's amazing because you, there's a reason it's done so well yeah because it's so catchy it's it it, it appeals to pretty much it it it, it lets you brain fire yeah it, it is it isn't just like a tunnel vision of oh I like metal or oh, I like this or oh, I like that it's if you like metal if you like jazz if you like whatever it's all elements are in pop music. Yeah, you know, it, it it does. It fires every part of your brain. Like a a lot of people that I know find it weird. Like if like I list off like my favorite albums because there are people like Sonic Youth in there, there are people like the Smashing Pumpkins in there. There's Television, there's Autica, there's Eight Hundred Eight State, and you know, then it kind of goes into a lot of like quite sort of like complex and avant garde stuff. But also in there, Billy Joel. <laughs> I love Billy Joel. Yeah. Like I'm not ashamed to say it. There's a possibility that I should be, but I'm not. Like, but I, I just think that pop music is that thing. My my first single when I was a kid was the Shoop Shoop song by Cher when she covered it for yeah, the yeah, Mermaid yeah. soundtrack. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and I've met so many people who are kind of like, oh, um, 
oh, my first single's really embarrassing. And I'm sat there thinking, like, so is mine, but I refuse to be embarrassed by it because I still think it's great. Yeah. Like, I will still listen to that song and be like, this is awesome, you know. People like sort of like associate the word with sort of like big club tracks or whatever. But I, I hear the Shoop Shoop song and I'm like, that's a banger. That's an <laughs> absolute banger. Like, you know. And I and I think pop music's great. And it was really nice to kind of like do that. But like, yeah, it, it it's nice to to have like something. And I, th that's part of the reason that I put it online was to have like a document of something that yeah. I've done. I don't even have a physical copy of that. Album you know, I don't know where it's gone, but um, it's nice that that's there, you know. Even if it's just to kind of like show, show the grandkids one day, like, oh, I did this kind of thing, like, you know, I didn't become a professional musician, I didn't get a record deal or anything like that. I thought I'm, you were sad. No, 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 no. We, um, there were. Uh, Tricky territory. Flirtations? <laughs> oh, okay. Nice. I think the aim was to get signed. And there were a couple of sort of like possibilities. But I think, and if I'm completely honest, I think it was probably because of ego. We didn't really pursue those in the right way. You know, I think I think you know we were young. We were writing music that we knew it was good. We were being told it was good, and that kind of thing. And I think we got arrogant to the point of like, oh, the labels will come to us. Oh, okay. And that right, okay. You know. Yeah, yeah. That 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 pretty much killed you then straight away. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's, uh, you can learn from it. Oh, absolutely. And that's that's nice. But yeah, like to be able, you know, say like, all right, I didn't go this far. This didn't become my living, but I still created this. Yeah. I still created this piece of art. And I'm still proud of it, you know. I say that now. I might listen to the album in a couple of days. And go, this is shit. Right? <laughs> but you know, it's, uh, I, I think it's good to have a document of those kinds of things, you know. And like with your sort of like drone stuff, like you do like the the quad videos and that kind of stuff. And like you know, some people might sort of look at that and go like, why is he doing this kind of thing? But you can still like look back on those at some point yeah. and go like, this is something I really enjoyed doing, and I did an impressive one that day. I Anything. didn't. It's I didn't nice realize how much I enjoyed making videos until I started making videos, and yeah. then as when it started off, it was just a video, a plain video, or a quad video, or mm. this. But then as time goes on, a lot like music, I imagine, you build things up and you add things to it, and you think, do you know mm. what? Am I going to be crazy enough to just add this little bit in? Or can I do that? And then you get a new computer and you can do a lot more, you know, and mm. then and things like that. And it's only been within the past like three weeks that I've stuck to a style that I like. So I stuck, to, I, I stuck to a style that I think is fun to watch, that I think engages people, that I think is fun to film, that doesn't take me, you know, six hours per per vehicle, but does yeah. take me a lot longer than just whacking it up in the end. So, you know, it goes, it looks nice, and and it just appeals. Yeah. I, I think it, that's the thing. You've got to, yeah, I, I, that's the thing with depression. You don't know when your last day is going to be, mm. or with life in general. Yeah. So it's nice to have a record of what you've done. Yeah. And even though I don't seek fame, I'm intrigued to find out where all this will go. I'm intrigued yeah. to find to find out how far, how better, how much better I can make, and how better the people that watch it talk to me, and yeah. how much better they can. Because people have started saying, "Oh, have you tried flying this? This one's great," mm. and I'll buy that. Do you know what I mean? I'll give them a shout out for it and stuff like that. And it's it's just yeah, it's yeah. fun. It's 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 incredible amount of fun that I didn't think you could have. Yeah, it's not it's not so much a a self serving like I'd like to see how people appreciate me kind of thing. It's a it's a case of like it's nice to know that I'm out there somewhere. Yeah, I think so. I think I never gave Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it's it's nice to, to do something because you can get sort of wrapped up in everything that you do and before you, you yeah. turn around you're like, you know, fifteen years have gone by and you think to yourself, Oh my god yeah. You know, I can't buy a house, I can't do this, I can't there's lots of can'ts mm. and I don't like that, it's very negative. Um but there are lots of can do's. Yeah. And I think this is what I enjoy so much about making videos, like you with music. I mean I mm. I play bass, not in a band or anything, I play bass I'm a jukebox. I listen to a song, I like a song, I learn the song, and yeah. that's it. And that's as far as it goes for me. 
mm. because the big thing I'd love to be in a band, but I have stage fright. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, make it over, it may not, but then the end of the day, base is personal to me. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I'm never going to make, I'm never going to want to make money off that. That's just something that I enjoy doing. And it's something that, you know, I think it's, I want to be able to play the songs that I like. Whereas making videos is a little bit more, I want to put that out there. I want to know what people think. I want them to know yeah. if they've had the same experiences that I've had, you know, and, and whatever else. I think the minute something you love becomes a job, it stops being so easy to love. Yeah. So. Absolutely. You know, kind of like being able to keep something in a way that you're passionate about it and have it out there so that people can have it if they want, but it not be how you're bringing home the bacon, as it were, mm. is a nicer kind of way to do it. Yeah. You know, because it's, it, it's satisfying that kind of like creative side of things, you know. People, people who paint, for example, will do a painting, you know. But once they've finished it, I think the majority of them are probably going to go like, I put my heart and soul into that. I hope someone else gets something out of it. Yeah. You know, so when, you know, when an artist sells a piece of art, that's, that's probably amazing for yeah. them. But like, I, I know of, you know, the majority of artists is not their main source of income. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I'm not saying you can't enjoy it if it is your job kind of thing, but I think you keep a, a closer personal connection to something when you're not flogging it as your wares yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. I think so too. I think so too. There's a lot of different, I mean, there's a lot of different careers which I think, oh wow, that sounds fun. Yeah. Or, oh wow, that sounds great. And then you go and do it and it doesn't become fun because now you're doing it. Yeah. You know, or, 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 <laughs> do, do, do you know what I mean? And you think to yourself, oh wow, okay, well I wanted to do this in life and now I'm doing that. And I'm thinking, oh. But then you get to a stage and you, you start making videos or you start putting out podcasts or you start making music or you start doing whatever you're doing. Yeah. And that's fun. You know, so you want to try and keep that as fun as possible. And it's, it's freeing as well because there's no yeah. sort of norm the way I do it, other people may not like, but the way that they do it, I may not like. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's it's very personal to you. You're making something that you want to make in your way. Yeah, I think that's one of the things I enjoyed about like positive reception of of music is like kind of like you know I know some people are going to listen to it and think like I'm not bothered by that. Yeah. Some people might even listen to it and think like oh, I think that's a bit shit, whatever. But like when someone says like oh, I really like this or like you know even as simple as saying like. That's pretty good. Like it's nice because you can kind of sit there and go like, yeah, I thought so as well, <laughs> kind of thing, you know. Yeah, like, exactly. Because you because you wouldn't put it out there unless you were, you know, at least semi proud of it. Yeah. You know. Exactly. So it's nice to. I don't think it's vindication, but I think it's nice to sort of say that someone else has like a a good feeling about it as well. Yeah. I think that's great. Yeah, I I, I enjoy that when somebody when I've. From just like one example, if I plough like say six hours into a video, yeah. and I think to myself, then I get like a few dislikes, and I think that's fine, that's fine. Not everyone's gonna like what I do, and that that's that's fine. Mm. But when I plough f- five or six hours into something, and I get fifteen people liking it, yeah, that feels brilliant because for whatever reason, or whatever part of it they like, whether it's my explanation of something, whether it's not me, whether it's the, the vehicle, whatever, mm. whatever it is that that person likes is such an amazing feeling. Yeah. You know, and it urges you to do more and it pushes yeah, yeah. you, you know, and I think that is, that helps depression. Yeah. That helps the overwhelming feeling of I'm not good enough. I can't do anything. Everything I touch turns to stone. Do you know what I mean? And it's, yeah, it's not sort of like, a desire to do anything for any kind of like extreme gratification or anything like that. It's kind of a. I just want to know that it's worth bothering, because if it's not, I feel useless again. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah, it's it, it's nice and it's really nice when people like say good things and stuff. But yeah, it's it's still very hard to push past that. Like, am I good enough? I, every single video I make, I put up, mm. 
and I wait and I think to myself, they're going to hate it, everyone's going to hate it, this isn't going to go down well and it's going to be something and then I find out that people like it and they enjoy it and I, it feels amazing. But I still, and then a week goes by and then I come to do the next lot and I think to myself, I'm not good enough, why am I doing this? Yeah. You know, why the hell am I doing this? This, this is, you know, people, you know, and then again, people like it and, and it, it's amazing, it, you know, it, but there's always that recurring, uh, I'm not good enough. Yeah. Anything I do isn't good enough. And it, it, it's me, that's the thing. I can't get yeah. out of my own head long enough to turn around and say, do you know what, shut up. Yeah. You know, just just do it, just enjoy it. Yeah. When I'm out and I'm recording, I'm loving it. I'm back to the old person that I was. I'm laughing, I'm joking, I'm, you know, and everything else. Yeah. And then the minute I stop doing it, I'm like, yeah, I'm useless. I can't do that again. Ultimately, life is fucking terrifying. Yeah. It's the scariest thing there is because you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. You don't know who's going to be there and who isn't. Yeah. You don't know anything. Yeah. It's fucking terrifying. Yeah. But there are ways of having fun with it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, although on several occasions during my life, I haven't seen that or I haven't believed that. Yeah. Sometimes when you do see it, it does turn everything on its head. Maybe not forever, maybe only for a time, but it does turn things on their head. And like, if you can find a bit of positivity, it's a really, really lovely thing. How, however you can manage to get that, I suppose, within reasons. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but... Well, we, we, we had the booze discussion. We had, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, but no, you know, I, I think, it, yeah, I think you need to crave... No, that's wrong. You need to... F- to find mm. the positive elements because there's so many times, as I'm sure you can attest to as well, without wanting to put words in your mouth, that for years you can just mull along and feel shit. You need to seek out the positive elements in order to feel like you're getting something back, I think. It doesn't even need to be big things either. No. You just need to be aware that it's positive. It's. I really like sandwiches. Yeah. You know? I know that seems like a silly thing, but if I remember that I like sandwiches, I can really fucking enjoy sandwiches. You know, that's like a nice little thing. I know that seems like such a silly thing to say, but like if I'm having like a really bad day, I will just go like, I'm going to make a sandwich and it's going to be amazing. Yeah. And I'll eat that sandwich. You know, it might not, it might not make my day perfect, but it's something. Yeah. And it reminds me that tomorrow will be different and it might be all right. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. But it's a little positive element. Glean the positive out of whatever you can do or however within reason. <laughs> but yeah, if, if you can find something positive and if you can find one thing positive every single day, I think. I mean, it would be really easy to sort of say like, you know, the obvious like from my perspective but from your perspective I've got a fiance who I love who I think is amazing you've got a wife who you love who you think is amazing yeah absolutely those are amazing positives yeah. in our lives um, and it's you know that's another thing you know because I will you know if I'm having a bad time going like but I do get to be with her yeah. and that's amazing but the reason for bringing up the whole sandwiches thing is that not everyone has a relationship you know but anyone can have a sandwich yeah so might as well <laughs> I think on that we're going to end that because yeah. I've got two minutes left of my SD card. Ah, okay. Before we're over. <laughs> Clearly, I didn't put the larger capacity one in there. So, anyway, cheers, right. Doug. That's all right. Nice to see you. And be here. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah, whatever. Heather, and just leave it on that. <laughs> Heather, Heather often says, like, why are you a game show host? <laughs> <laughs> you should walk around with a clipboard. Like, what's his name from It'll Be Alright in the Night? Oh, um. Not Magnus Magnusson, what was his name? Dennis Norden. Dennis Norden, yes, you should walk around with a clipboard. Just with a pen and just like point to people and just say random funny things. Like one liners and stuff like that. Anyway, off you pop. Cool. <laughs>